Money's great, isn't it? In this video, we'll look at how you can store money in a SQL Server database. So as you might know, SQL Server has a money data type, and we can see it in the database table here. Standard cost is a money data type. There is also one called small money. We'll find more about that later. So when and why should we use the money data type, or when should we not use it? And are there any alternatives? Let's have a look. So first of all, the money data type is accurate to one ten thousandth of a currency unit. So this should be enough for our most day-to-day -day money currency calculations. It supports many currency types. And let's have a look, see if your currency is included. So this table is linked to in the description below, but as you can see, it supports obviously the dollars, cents, pounds, yen, and many global currencies, our euro as well. And more reasons for using the money data type. So Microsoft are really keen on using the money data type. And the AdventureWorks database that I use in my tutorials, and you can also download it from the Microsoft website, it uses it extensively through the database. Just about all of the currency fields use money data type. I'm kind of keen on self-documenting code as well as databases. So if you put money data type in your database, then it's pretty obvious. As you can see here, we know that standard cost, this price, sometimes you might not know what the data is according to the name of the column, but if you see that the data type is money, then it's pretty obvious what it is. More reasons for using the money data type. We'll find out more about the decimal data type later, but money can normally use less storage space and it is said that uh, the money data type is marginally faster when doing calculations. So if you're making a high performance application, then this could be valuable. There is also the small money data type. And here are the values that you can store the maximum and the minimum values. So about 214,000 and whatever currency you're using. And I would say that the small money field is really good for regular e-commerce websites. Um, here's a screenshot of Amazon and you see that uh, these Lego products are priced from like $44.99 and less. So it could easily fit the data in a small money field. So when might we not want to use the money field? Okay, so the big problem here is that the money data type is specific to SQL Server. You won't find it in any other database that I know of. This is really important. If you're working with an organization that uses like SQL Server and Oracle or SQL Server, MySQL or some other database, then you might be wary of using the money field. Uh, most converters can actually like convert the money field, but it just complicates data import and export. If you're doing a lot of calculations, it's said that the money field can lose accuracy. Uh, this is kind of open to debate though. Normally, if you're multiplying or subtracting money fields, it's normally with a whole number. So this tends not to be a huge problem. Just bear in mind though, if you're writing stock trading applications or other financial applications, that you need to be a lot more careful when you're doing calculations. So be very wary of using the money data type then. So what are the alternatives to the money data type? A great alternative is the decimal data type, specifically the decimal 19,4 data type. So the decimal data type has two numbers in the brackets, the arguments. The first one is the precision, here it's 19. The second one is the scale, here it's four. What do these numbers mean? Precision is the number of digits to store, and this can be from one to 38. 38 is the maximum. And the scale here, is the number of digits after the decimal point. 
So how many digits can you store before the decimal point? So scale is subtracted from precision. So that shows you how many can be stored before the decimal point. Let's look at an example here. So decimal 194 is the one that's the most commonly used because it's very similar to the money field. Okay, this one has four digits after the decimal point, which is a scale, and it has 15 digits before the decimal point. This is precision minus scale. So 19 minus four is 15. And what can we store in a decimal 194? This is the range. So we can store 15 digits before the decimal point and four digits after the decimal point with a decimal 19.4. Let's look at storage space. If you're creating very large database and space is an issue, then you might want to consider these factors. So the money field takes eight bytes of storage space. Small money, which we saw earlier, is good for e-commerce applications that can take four bytes. So that's only half as much storage space as a regular money field. The amount of storage space decimal takes varies. Let's have a look at this table. So it depends on the precision. If you want to store a very precise number, then it can take up to 17 bytes of storage. And we were looking at a precision of 19, which means that uh, the decimal 19,4 will take up an extra byte compared to money. We should also look at rounding issues. So this article goes into the quite complex details of how rounding issues can affect decimal and money, small money data types. So if you're writing very precise financial applications, then you might want to take this into account. So to summarize, money and small money, they can take up less storage space. They help you self-document your database, but just bear in mind that they are SQL Server specific. Decimal is often preferred by many developers. It takes up slightly more storage space, but it is said to be better for calculations. It's also a very common data type and supported by pretty much every relational database there is. If you have any more thoughts or comments or suggestions about uh, data types or any other SQL Server issues, then please do leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.